Hi everybody, it's Danielle from Haverford Township Free Library and welcome to another week of pajama story time. So, we're, I'm not in the library right now, but the library is open. You can come in to pick up books, you can come in to pick up DVDs and video games, you can come in just to say hi. It's a grab and go sort of thing, but we hope to see you in the library. But in the meantime, we're still doing our programs from home, so you can watch them whenever you want to. So let's get started with our jazzy new pajama story time song from Sandra Boyton's Philadelphia Chickens. Ready? Can you snap along with me? The moon is up. It's getting late. Let's get ready to celebrate. It's pajama time. Oh, it's pajama time. Pull on the bottoms, put on the top. Get yourself set to pajama deep up. It's pajama time. Oh, it's pajama time. Pajama to the left, pajama to the right. Everybody's wearing them for stories tonight. It's pajama time. Hush, hush, it's pajama time. Hush, hush, it's pajama time. Shh. Perfect. So we can get started on our first book, which is one that is a huge favorite of every kid that I know, including my daughter, The Book with No Pictures by B.J. Novak. So... Let me move on a little bit closer, even though there's no pictures in this book, but still, you want to see it a little better. The Book with No Pictures by B.J. Novak. This is a book with no pictures. It might seem like no fun to have somebody read you a book with no pictures. It probably seems boring and serious, except here is how books work. Everything the words say, the person reading the book has to say. No matter what. That's the deal. That's the rule. So that means even if the words say, bark. Wait, what? That doesn't even mean anything. Barf? Wait a second. What? This is the kind of book that I wanted to read and I have to say every word the book says? Oh no. I am a monkey who taught myself to read. Hey, I'm not a monkey. And now I am reading you this book with my monkey mouth in my monkey voice. That is not true. I am not a monkey. Yes, I am a monkey. Also, I am a robot monkey. What? I heard of a robot monkey. And my head is made of blueberry pizza? Wait a second. Blueberry pizza? Is this whole book a trick? Can I please stop reading? Please? No? Oh, it's going to get worse, isn't it? And now it's time for me to sing you my favorite song. A song? Do I really have to sing a song in the middle of the... Glug, 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 my face is a bug. I eat ants for breakfast right off the rug. What? I don't eat ants. No, that is not the... This book is ridiculous. Can I stop reading yet? No? Well, there are more pages? I have to read... My only friend in the whole world is a hippo named Boo Boo Butt. Boo Boo Butt? No, no. And also, the kid I'm reading this book to is the best kid ever in the history of the entire world. Oh, really? And this kid is the smartest kid, too, because this kid chose this book even though it had no pictures. Because kids know this is the book that makes grown-ups have to say silly things. I hope it doesn't get worse. And make silly sounds. Like... Oh. Oh no. Here it comes, right? Grr, 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 grr. 
Welcome on Rumpadoo! Ay, ay, ay! Brr, 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 brr! was just that was just no please don't ever make me read this book again it is so silly in fact it is completely and utterly preposterous next time please 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 choose a book with pictures please because this is just too ridiculous to read the end oh thank goodness bonk wait i didn't want to say that i didn't i i didn't closing this book right now before it gets any worse. That was ridiculous. Oh, book with no pictures. BJ Novak, what are you doing to me? Oh, well, let's just do something much different than that. Let's do a song. Let's do a banana song. So take your banana shape. Bananas don't have a lot of choices with shapes. So, you know, you can kind of go this way or you can go this way if you want to be really ridiculous and do your banana shape upside down you could do that but i'm just going to take my you know normal banana shape here ready bananas unite and peel bananas peel peel bananas and peel bananas peel peel bananas and chop bananas chop chop bananas and chop bananas Chop, chop, bananas, and smash, bananas, smash, smash, bananas, and smash, bananas, smash, smash, bananas, and eat, bananas, eat, eat, bananas, and eat, bananas, eat, eat, bananas, and throw, bananas, throw, throw, bananas, and throw, bananas, throw, throw, bananas, and ninja, bananas, ninja, bananas, and ninja. Bananas, ninja, bananas, and go bananas! Oh, I know this is supposed to be pajama story time. This is supposed to be settling you down for bed, and I am not doing that, am I? No, you guys aren't going to bed anyway. I know, it's summertime. You're up late. I can't sleep. I need to stay. Yeah, I know. How about we do another book? Let's do... This is We Don't Eat Our Classmates by Ryan T. Higgins. This book just cracks me up. We Don't Eat Our Classmates. Hey kids, you will never be eaten by a T-Rex. They are extinct, I promise. Oh, look at this. This is Penelope. Isn't she cute? Penelope Rex was nervous. It's not every day a little T-Rex starts school. What are, what are my classmates going to be like? Will they be nice? How many teeth will they have? This was very important. Penelope's mom bought her a new backpack with ponies on it. Ponies were Penelope's favorite because ponies are delicious. Penelope's dad packed her a lunch of 300 tuna sandwiches. Wow. And one apple juice. That's a big lunch. Finally, the big day came and Penelope Rex was very surprised that all of her classmates were children. Not a single dinosaur in that whole room. Look, they're all kids. Oh boy. Oh, and there's, you know, one fish over there. Let's turn this page. So, she ate them because children are delicious. Penelope rocks, said Mrs. Noodleman. We don't eat our classmates. Please spit them out at once. So she did. Ew. Now they're all covered in dinosaur spit. So it was not the best way to start school. 
Still, Penelope was determined to have a good first day. She tried to make friends at recess. <laughs> she finger painted some of her best work. She even saved Griffin Emery a seat, a seat at lunch. You can sit right here. She's pointing to her plate. People started to know, Penelope started to notice everyone was making friends but her. It was lonely. Why do you think that she had trouble making friends? I think maybe because she was trying to eat them. Yeah, maybe. When she got home, her dad asked about her first day of school. I didn't make any friends, Penelope cried. None of the children wanted to play with me. Penelope Rex, her father asked, did you eat your classmates? Well, maybe, sort of, just a little bit. Well, sometimes it's hard to make friends, said her dad, especially if you eat them. You see, Penelope, children are the same as us on the inside, just tastier. That gave Penelope a lot to think about. The next day, Penelope tried really hard, but poor Penelope, she could not stop herself from eating her classmates. Mrs. Noodleman, Penelope ate William again. Oh no. And they were all afraid of her. Makes sense, right? Except Walter. Walter was a goldfish. So Penelope tried to make friends with him. Will you be my friend? Um, dump! Oh no! Walter bit her! Eee! cried Penelope. He's eating my finger! Ah! Once Penelope found out what it was like to be someone's snack, she lost her appetite for children. She stopped eating her classmates, even when Cece Woodman spilled barbecue sauce all over herself. Mm -hmm. And soon Pen Penelope made friends. Found you! She even made brownies for them. Want a brownie? I helped make them. Now, even when children look especially delicious, she peeks at Walter and remembers what it's like when somebody tries to eat you. And Walter the goldfish stares right back at her and licks his lips. <gasps> Your goldfish have lips? Because dinosaurs are delicious. The end. That is We Don't Eat Our Classmates by Ryan T. Higgins. I really, really like that book. Oh, let's get ready for our silly lullaby. So I think I'm going to snuggle my teddy bear, Melvin. Melvin's an old friend of mine, had him for a long time. So grab your snuggle buddy, either your stuffed animal or a pillow or a blanket or a sibling or a grown up or your hug yourself and get ready for our silly lullaby from Sandra Boynton. Ready? Go to sleep, my zoodle, my fibbledy fitsy foo. Go to sleep, sweet noodle, it's time to say achoo. Sneezing your elbow. The chickens in the bathtub, the closet full of sheep, the sneakers in the freezer are drifting off to sleep. Go to sleep, my zoodle, my fibbledy fitsy foo. Go to sleep, sweet noodle, the owl is whispering, moo. And with that, we say good night. And thank you so much for joining me for Pajama Storytime this week. I hope you join me again next week. And I hope to see you at the library coming in for some books soon. Bye for now.